Good afternoon, viewers. It's Rob Atfield reporting for Port Carling Boats. We're here in Buffalo, New York at the uh, Antique Wooden Boat Center of the Niagara chapter of the Antique and Classic Boat Society. And um, we're going to take a brief tour around, and I'd like to start by introducing Doug, who's currently working on this beautiful canoe that's going to be auctioned as a fundraiser for the club. Doug, over to you. Okay. Well, this is part of the Buffalo Maritime Center that the uh, Antique Boat Society is a portion of that. And we're, this is a, a club project that we're building to raffle off at the end of the year to develop some funds to improve the facility that we have. At the Maritime Festival that will be downtown Buffalo at the Buffalo Harbor right. is when we'll have the actual raffle Makes part, sense. but we'll sell tickets all summer for okay. it. And what exactly would you do with the funds that you raised from the boat? Has that been determined yet? No, it, it'll be <clears throat> probably used to improve the facility. We had several leaks in the roof uh, this winter. Uh, they need to be fixed. Minor uh, detail, hey, when it's yeah, minus 20. <laughs> that's right. And there's the, the facilities uh, coming along, but there is a, a lot of work that needs to yeah. be done to improve it. Oh, good for you. Now, can you tell us a bit about this beautiful canoe you're building? That's, it looks like uh, an 18-footer. Uh, it's actually 16 foot. 16, okay. Uh, it's a Bear Mountain Prospector uh, design. Uh, it's a, uh, a touring canoe. It uh, has a very broad beam, so it's able to carry a, a lot of uh, camping gear as well okay. as two campers. And this is a cedar strip, uh, cedar strip, I presume, right. is it? Yeah. Red, a Western red uh, cedar uh, strip. Okay. So at this point we have uh, fiberglass and three coats of epoxy on the outside. We're just starting to sand the, the inside. We just took it off the farms and right. we'll be putting uh, six ounce fiberglass and epoxy on the inside and then the, the gunnel and the end whale, the seats and the thwart. Okay, so it won't require ribs because of the no, strength be given no by the... Uh epoxy and so on. It's really an epoxy built with a wood core, but yes. the nice thing is when you put varnish on the outside, the beauty of the wood will come through. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, it sounds beautiful. I wish you all the best with the uh, completion of the boat. And there you have it, viewers. If you want a chance to bid on this uh, uh, beautiful canoe when it's finished, uh, once again, the date of the auction was going to be... It'll be in uh, September. Of 2015. Right. And through Old Boats Buffalo, I guess people could Google the you? Buffalo Maritime uh, Center. Buffalo uh, to Maritime Center, we, okay. We, New York mm. State law allows us to sell raffle tickets on our premise or our town next to it. And unfortunately, we can't sell them over the internet. Yeah. But uh, if people would like to uh, come to the Buffalo Maritime Center here at 90 Arthur Street, uh, take a look at it, buy a raffle ticket, we'd be glad to sell them to them. Okay, there you go, viewers. Thanks, Doug. Viewers, John Montague has been kind enough to take us on a tour of this amazing building. And uh, what we're looking at here is kind of a storage for facility for boats in transition. But uh, this gives you an idea of the extent of the work that's going on in this facility. Absolutely amazing. I'm not sure how many square feet there would be, but I'm sure it's probably... Uh, 27,000. 50,000? 27,000. So 27,000 square feet of areas to work on. Well, not entirely to work on wooden boats, but uh, certainly lots of room for projects. Viewers, this is Phil Sullivan, who's working on this beautiful old boat. Uh, apparently, it's a family heirloom that was lost to the family for some time, and Phil has found it in a yard and brought it back here for restorative work. Phil. Hi, this is a custom-built 27-foot Seabright skiff. It was designed by uh, Fred Lawley, who was the son of the famous a yacht designer George Lawley. It was designed for my grandfather in 1945. Wow. Um, it was actually built by my uncle uh, in our family boatyard. Construction probably started around 47 or 48. Wow. Um, so it was, uh, unfortunately my grandfather died before the boat was completed. So after he died and when it was completed, it went to my dad. And uh, it was completed in uh, in a, finally in its final configuration in 1954 and it was our family boat growing up so myself and my my family we had uh, three other siblings and my mom and dad we traveled all over uh, New England with this boat and uh, 
After my dad died in 1990, um, my mom sold it a few years later, been out of the family for about 20 years, and about three years ago, strange set of circumstances, I was able to get it back. I found it, and now I'm restoring it. Wow, so, remarkable story. So a lot story. of work to do, yeah. uh, but it's, uh, it's pretty neat. I have all the original plans and a lot of history and memorabilia for it, so um, I enjoy it. Good for you. This is a huge boat. Yeah, 27 feet. Yeah. Um, that would handle Lake Erie very well, I'm sure. It's a Seabright skiff with a box keel, as they would say. Okay. And it's designed, for, it was designed uh, really for, as a work boat along the Jersey Shore for the fishermen for riding in the surf. And it wow. it's designed to go right up in the beach. It stays right up on the beach. Wow. Uh, and so you could, they could beach it without damaging it? Absolutely. It's about, the keel's about four feet wide at its largest point. So okay. what and they the, would do, the fishermen would come in at about half tide, well, get their stuff out, and then uh, the boat would be on the beach, and then when the tide came back in, then they would wow. drive the boat away. So the prop would be above the keel, so it wouldn't yeah, be damaged. Yeah, the prop is, well, it's going to be about right here. I had to replace, this is the new horn timber I just replaced. Okay. Uh, horn timber and stern knee is all new. There's new deadwoods going in here, and then um, new whole new shaft line wow. all redesigned with the bearing and the seal, and uh, that's all been redesigned. Wow. So uh, they'll replace all the deep floors, a little bit of the stem, and then I'll get into the planks. Wow. Big job. Yeah. Probably what, another two or three years, would you think? Two or three years is Yeah. Plan. Well, I wish you all the best. Okay, thanks a lot. There you have it, viewers. That's Starling. This beautiful skiff. Quite a beautiful boat. I should let you know that this part of the building is uh, operated by the Niagara Frontier chapter of the Antique and Classic Boat Society. There's some other beautiful boats in this section. This was a passenger ferry, apparently, uh, for on Lake Ontario. And this 42-footer here, which is going under, going to require some extreme uh, restoration work, is a 1926 Liggett. 40-footer, a John Hacker and Furman design. And I guess we could go and take a quick look up top here. A pretty massive boat. Apparently getting the boat into the shop was no minor feat. I can certainly understand why. Apparently the building where all this beautiful maritime marine work is going on was donated by a local bank. It, uh, the building itself had fallen into disrepair and was being vandalized. And uh, the folks associated with boat projects here have banded together and are in the midst of some major restorative work. Once again, no shortage of projects going on here. The Niagara Frontier Chapter also has obviously a series of classic uh, antique outboards for those enthusiasts that are really keen on these older engines. This beauty is in for some fairly moderate uh, restorative work. Uh, she has been running on the local waterways here. Believe it or not, it's not an Elko, although it is an electric, uh, an electric boat powered by apparently some 48 volt batteries. Five horsepower engine, but she moves along quite well. The original plan was to put solar panels on the roof, but uh, at the time that was considered, panels were too heavy, so it would have affected stability issues. So at the moment, uh, she's being recharged on land, but she'll, uh, she'll run for about five hours apparently. Sides here, you can see that uh, a fair bit of accommodation for seating. Shop's dusty, so of course all the boats are laden with dust. They can soon be removed for cruising.
number of, quite a large number of sailboats in the facility viewers. This vessel apparently is being uh, worked on by a uh, retiring or retired surgeon. I wanted to change of pace. In some cases, boats are being epoxied over, I guess, where the structural weaknesses really demand it. And this is a particular case here. This uh, particular craft will be uh, sandwiched, I, I believe, both inside and outside with epoxy. In another uh, area of the shop, viewers, we've got some grade 8 students here working on what they're calling a six-hour canoe. These are canoes that apparently can be built in about six hours with a minimum of fuss and uh, materials. Looks like they're going to prepare the bottom. So you think you'll actually be able to do this one in six hours? Maybe a little longer? A little longer. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> six hours for maybe. Once, once you've done your fifth or sixth boat, maybe it'll be down to six right. hours. Eh? As you can see, viewers, there's a lot going on here. Other small craft, as well as the six foot, uh, six hour canoes as well. The rowing skiffs. Once again, though, simple design and probably not too labor intensive to complete one of these small boats. The machinery in this part of the shop, uh, viewers, has been donated. This is going to become a machine shop, ultimately, where uh, boats can be hardwared, I suppose, and have other metal parts fabricated here. It's quite a wealth of equipment. And there also are members of the club that are quite experienced machinists, apparently, willing to help and uh, instruct. <clears throat> Another area where small boats are being constructed or modified or restored. This is being modified. The girl is going to sail this down to Florida. We're on the second floor here, viewers, of the Buffalo Maritime Center. And this is going to be a research area, study area, and uh, it had already received many kind donations of books and magazines. And also, I think this area is going to ha house a number of uh, model boats as well. It's quite a ex striking example here. Beautifully detailed design. So as you can see, there's an awful lot going on at the Buffalo Maritime Center. It's been a project, I think, about 20 years in the making. And uh, each year, more and more work is done to upgrade the facility and offer more to the many clients uh, and enthusiasts wanting to use it. So there you have it. There's a brief tour of this amazing facility right in downtown Buffalo, the Buffalo Maritime Center. Thanks for watching. Over and out.